Welcome to the 2022 Unity Beginners course. This is episode 15 and I will talk about the canvas element and UI basics. UI elements in Unity will be rendered on top of everything else in the scene. There are different types of elements provided by default, such as text, button, slider, input field, etc. Before we begin, we will install the Text Mesh Pro package. This is an extension package that provides much better looking UI elements. When we add an UI element without this package installed, Unity will show a message window asking us to install the TM Pro package. Click the install button and the package will be installed automatically. Now, the fundamental element of UI rendering is the canvas. It controls the dimensions and handles rendering of all UI elements inside. All the UI elements should be placed inside a canvas parent, and there can be multiple canvases in the scene. We should always set the size and the scaling behavior of the canvas before working on the UI itself. Usually, we set the screen size to 16 to 9 full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. This slider here controls how the canvas will resize when the screen resolution of the running device differs. Enabling the 2D mode in the scene view allows us to directly adjust the size and position of UI objects. I personally prefer to add it using the game view and the inspector instead. When using the game view, Make sure to select the proper rendering resolution at the top of the tab. In our case, it is Full HD. Or otherwise, the UI will be messed up. The text element draws text on the screen. There are different options for the text, which you can edit via the inspector. These options are just like the ones in word editing software. I usually disable the wrapping option and the content of the text can be modified during runtime via scripting. Let's see how to do it. We first need to add the import TM Pro statement at the top of the script. Text Mesh Pro objects can be rendered as UI elements and in-game 3D objects. The former is of the class Text Mesh Pro UGUI, and the latter is of the class Text Mesh Pro. We will define a Text Mesh Pro UGUI reference called Sample Text in this case. To change the content of the text, we can simply assign a string value to sample text. When we run the game, the text changes as expected. Let's move on to buttons. The text is basically the same. We will focus on the onClick field. This is an event that will be triggered when a button is clicked. We can attach custom functions to this event via the inspector. So when this event is triggered, our own functions get executed as well. To do this, we first need to define a public method in our own script. Head back to the editor and click the plus sign in this field. Drag the object reference which our desired script is attached to into this field and select our newly defined function in this drop down list. We can add a parameter to our function and we can define a value for the action in the inspector. Note only the first parameter will be displayed and a parameter type must be of primitive data types or it will not be displayed. When we click the button during runtime, our method gets executed. We may also set the colors of the button when it is enabled, disabled, clicked, and highlighted. The next element is the slider. We can define a value range in the inspector. The whole numbers field specifies whether decimals are allowed. The value of the slider can be accessed and modified using the slider.value property. Make sure to add 
the using Unity Engine.ui statement in your script when you have to access the slider class. The image element is relatively simple. We can use it as a backdrop or we can assign a 2D image sprite asset to it. I have an image here and I need to set its texture type to sprites and hit apply. Then we can assign it to the image element. It is crucial to mention the anchoring and sizing of UI elements. We should always use the width and height properties instead of the scale property to resize UI objects. Pressing on a square here allows us to adjust the anchors of the object. The anchors are in the center by default. If we want the object to stick to, say the top left corner, we can set its anchors to the corresponding corner. The object will stick to the corner even when the screen size changes. Now I want to, this image to always fill the screen. To do this, we can set its anchors to stretch. Notice when we change the anchors, the position values will be changed as well. This is due to the position values are relative to the anchor positions. There is also a useful component called the event trigger. It provides different triggering callbacks for the UI element, similar to the on-click event of the button element. We can listen to the pointer down, pointer up, drag and drop events. For example, we can use the pointer up event to reset the value of the slider when the slider is released. And that are the basics of UI elements in Unity. This is episode 15 of the 2022 Unity Beginners course. I am Yellow Flicker and I will see you in the next episode. Stay tuned.